We're in our fourth year um, of the revamped University of Minnesota breeding program, which is really exciting because this is the first time we're able to um, actually look at yield in some of our new potential varieties. So we've got uh, 65 approximately uh, reds, yellows, chips, and russets that um, we are growing out in a couple of replicates and we're going to be able to get, thus far we've really been looking at um, kind of quality traits and specific gravity and deciding, making calls based on that and we're really going to get a sense of yield for the first time this year. So um, that's, that's really exciting for us and moving us toward newer varieties. Um, we also have things all the way down the pipeline. Um, we're growing about 26,000 uh, year ones, so the first time we look at things, um, we're growing those at the North Central Research and Outreach Station. We're looking at about 400 uh, year twos, um, and then we have about uh, 150 year threes. Um, and so all of these are in all four market classes, and uh, this is uh, our pipeline for new varieties. Um, it takes time, breeding takes time, uh, and one of the things we're interested in doing is speeding that up. Um, so part of how we've grown out the field year four and the field year three, so our most advanced clones, is we're working with the other breeders in the US to develop mathematical models that let us uh, speed up the breeding process and speed up our selection process. So, um, and this is part of a uh, USDA NEFA uh, SCRI grant. Um, and so we've sent our year four material to Susie here in North Dakota and to Jeff Endelman at the University of Wisconsin and to uh, Dave Douches at Michigan State and we are growing their material as well so we're able to get these um, multi-environment measures faster so we have an idea if something looks good it's just because it looks good at Becker uh, where we're growing or if it looks good in multiple places and um, that data is really important to build these models that let us um, speed things up. So uh, this is our first year we're sort of trying this as a big group. Um, breeders across the country are genotyping all of their late stage clones and we are going to um, work together to combine this genotype and phenotype data, so uh, the genetics and then um, what we can measure about the plants for traits that are important to us um, to make it so we can all move faster. Uh, so that's an, one of the exciting developments in our program. Um, we are also growing all of our late stage clones at a couple of different nitrogen levels and we're hoping to screen for um, nitrogen efficiency and find some varieties that require less nitrogen and we're looking early in our program so we don't weed out varieties that could be good for nitrogen but um, don't look as good at really high nitrogen and uh, my postdoc, Dr. Xiaoxi Meng is leading that program. She got an MDA grant and next year she's flying drones over the field um, to see if we can predict what will do well at lower nitrogen. We are also uh, working with Dr. Munever Dogramasi um, on looking at how harvest uh, times and strategies affect dormancy and uh, my breeding specialist, Dr. Thomas Stefaniak, is taking the lead on that. 
Um, we're uh, looking at timing of nitrogen for red potatoes and if that uh, interacts with variety and how that interacts with variety with some of our late stage clones. And uh, Thomas is also uh, taking the lead on that. We're um, creating diploid potatoes. We grew our first ones out in the field this year. Um, and they look terrible, but that's honestly expected. Uh, it's a process. But they grew, and they're producing tubers. So um, that's a step in the right direction. And my grad student, uh, Muyadin Youssef, who's somewhere around here, um, is uh, taking the lead on that. Um, we're uh, working on um, phenotyping better. So uh, we have, we're developing image analysis software to get better at really quantifying um, skin color and skin loss and tuber shape um, for red potatoes because to select for something you have to be able to measure it really well. Uh, or at least we have to be able to measure it really well. I think Susie uh, looks at them and they wink at her, but um, we're uh, getting there. And so um, my graduate student Michael is uh, developing that software and expanding it to also measure pressure brews and russeting. Um, we are looking at uh, potato diversity in collaboration with the gene bank in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, um, and trying to identify a really small set of wild potatoes that are most representative so we can use them for um, when we're looking for new disease or stress resistance traits we're interested in breeding in so that we can um, screen a really small set of clones instead of a huge set of clones. And uh, my graduate student Heather is working on that. Um, yeah, so we have uh, Oh, and then the other thing we've been doing is we inherited a bunch of clones from uh, the former breeder, Dr. Christian Thell, and it took us a while to clean them up because they all had a pretty high disease load. Um, so we put them through antiviral tissue culture, and we are growing them out this year to um, see what they look like and be able to figure out if we have uh, promising varieties there. The we have a couple that we just keep hearing from people um, are delicious. So we've got a purple, 07112, and we've got a yellow, 04844, that um, just talking to people, we keep hearing that they ate when Christian was growing and they would be interested in eating again. Um, and so we're growing those out in collaboration with an organic grower in the Twin Cities. Um, and we're having sort of a tasting event. And our hope is to release those um, on sort of a uh, gardener kind of scale. Um, so those will hopefully be out in the world soon. And we're hoping to follow up on that with um, some of Christian's other varieties that uh, seem promising. So thank you very much for um, letting me update you all on what's going on in Minnesota.